You can now edit vector graphics right from within Kittle's interface. When combined with their vector AI tools, such as generating vectors, converting images to vectors, or even editing text to create unique vectorized text, this tool is a really big step up for anyone wanting to combine AI with graphic design. So today I'm gonna to show you exactly how these tools work so you can start creating and editing your vector art right within Kittle's interface. I also wanna quickly mention that this video is sponsored by Kittle and there is a link in the description. And if you're wondering what a vector graphic is, essentially it is a type of image made up of shapes and points that allows you to scale it to virtually any size. This is something that is a great alternative to bitmaps, which is made up of little pixels of color that can't be enlarged beyond a certain point without losing quality. So we're gonna start off by generating a vector image within Kittle, and then we're going to edit some of the points. So that way you get an idea of how these tools work. I have a fresh new project open here in Kittle, and if I wanna generate any kind of uh, vector graphic without having to convert it, then I can go down here to the Kittle AI section, head up to image generator. And there's two ways you can go about it. You can use ideogram and scroll down. You'll see there are vector styles here that will create a vector image. Or you can choose DALI 3, which also has some vector styles down here. So if I choose say vector art here, something nice and simple, and I type something up here like a cartoon dog face wearing sunglasses and hit enter, and you see it's generated my vector and placed it on the canvas. And this is where the editing comes into play. I'm going to zoom in. With this vector object selected, if I double click, you'll notice a bunch of points appear. So just clicking away for a sec, if there was something I wanted to edit, let's say maybe I wanted to get rid of these dots here, or maybe I wanted to sort of change this reflection here a little bit to give it a finer adjustment, I double click, and I can, holding down Alt in my mouse wheel, I'm gonna zoom in, I can actually just click on each point and hit delete on my keyboard and slowly delete those points. And I can do the same again and delete those points. So it's a pretty handy tool for removing things. It's holding down space. And since the points are dictating the shape by highlighting them and removing them or changing them, I'm changing the image. And you can see those dots are now gone. And if I want to adjust something again, I double click. If I want to move this up a little bit, I can still delete points and smooth them out a little bit if I want to. You see I've changed the nature of that reflection. Now I have accidentally duplicated this, but that's okay because that means that I can now compare the reflection on both. And if you can see here, this one's got a bit more of a loopy shape in it. This one's a bit flatter. So at any point I can go in and make any changes. The reflection here is too strong, click delete, maybe even bring this out. And you'll notice I have these little handles I can move to create a curve with. I can double click to create a point. I can double click again to create a curve. I can bring this one in and have a curve. I can basically bring this one in as well and have a straight line and a curve. I can make all sorts of adjustments just by double clicking and moving those points. But to give you a better idea, I'm actually gonna to touch on the pen tool now, because it shows you how you can not only draw vector shapes and vector images within Kittle, but also I'm gonna show you how you can edit the points and get more precise with what you're doing with this tool. And this applies to editing any of your vector images as well. So I'll get rid of this duplicate head here and come down. And down the bottom here, you notice there's a pen tool, or I can click P on my keyboard. I can click on this and just start drawing an object. Now I've drawn something pretty basic here, but I can also click hold and get a handle to create a curve. I can do the same again, click hold to get a curve, or I can just click for a corner, click and hold for a curve, and I can essentially draw an object that way. And the cool thing about vector images is, once it's made again, I can come back to my arrow here and simply double click to make any changes I want to those points. I can even add a point in here and delete this point to kind of smooth things out and just adjust those handles. So you can really smooth things out pretty easily and effectively with vector graphics. And the other cool thing is because we're in Kittle here, at the moment this is just transparent with a black border. So even with the dogs, same thing applies. I can come down here, there's a border. I can make the border thicker or smaller. I can click on color and add a color like red to create a red shape here. If I click on the dog, same thing applies, illustration colors. I choose gold, maybe I add a border, a black border, and it's very easy to change those colors around. 
So you're not just stuck with black and white. And again, if I double click, the same thing applies as on the dog over here. Clicking once, I can move these handles in. Now they're not perfectly symmetrical, but they will basically be symmetrical with the angle, but not symmetrical in length. But if I bring this all the way in, it actually then gives me the opportunity to create two different directions. So I can click on this. I can move this around. Or I can double click and convert between the two. So it's a pretty handy tool to edit. Changing those point types is a very important part of the editing process. And once you get an idea of how this all works, it is actually really powerful and very easy to start drawing basic objects up. But now I also want to touch on the shape builder, which gives you the ability to add basic shapes onto your page, but also you can use them to help kind of craft, cut out and mold certain shapes. I'll show you what I mean. Back to the shape we just drew here. This is a custom shape I've drawn by hand, just kind of having a bit of a play with the pen tool. But down here next to the pen tool, you'll see rectangle with an arrow. Now if I click on that arrow, I can choose to draw a star, polygon, ellipse. I have all these different tools. I can take a rectangle, click on it, and just simply draw in a rectangle. I also have the option to put rounded corners on there, the same color and border options as before, even semi-transparency, which is something that's available here as well. I can make it semi-transparent, blend them together. And essentially with each shape, I get a few little options. The ellipse is essentially just an ellipse. I can hold down shift to get a perfect circle or I can create kind of like a, a more of an ellipse type, sh type shape. So as I'm placing these on the canvas, again, rounded corners, same options. The star is a little bit different in the sense that I can pop, pop the star on here and I can change the points, change how deep this goes in so I can get a pretty unique looking star by playing with these sort of radius points here. But also if I come over to the right over here, you notice it has five because of five points to the star. I can essentially come in here and make that eight and have an eight pointed star. I have all these really, really nifty options for creating something unique. But it's not so much I wanna show you about shapes you can create as much as what you can do with them. I've covered this in a previous video, but they've actually stepped it up a little bit more. In the past, you were able to subtract one shape from another, but that was as far as you could go. If I hold down shift and select the star and the circle, for one, I can combine them together into one shape, which I'm going to undo with, or if I hold down shift, I can subtract and remove the star from the circle. I'll hit Control Z to undo. I can intersect, so it actually kind of creates a shape over the out of the overlap of the two shapes. Or if I hold down shift again, I can exclude the intersection, which creates this kind of like cutout shape here. Now where this gets really, really handy is if I have this shape here, is I can now use it to start to influence the overall look of what I'm creating. So if I pop this here, position it correctly the way I want so it cuts off that bottom lip, I can hold down shift, subtract, and I've got something unique there. However, maybe I want, if I rotate this, some kind of continuation here. Maybe I'm coming up like this, holding down shift and combining, and maybe these are looking like eyes. I can double click, move these little points around. I add my circle in there, subtract, then maybe I add like a little box down the bottom. So I can start to basically build shapes by combining these tools together. So you can see how very quickly you can start to create some very, very powerful objects. So this also works now if I go beyond just using the basic shapes, that if I delete this, and let's say I create an ellipse, and maybe I wanna shape it into something like a head, I grab my pen tool, instead of trying to draw it perfectly, I can click here and I can essentially draw the section that I'd like to cut out. And I can also align it like this, come around, and you'll notice a little point appears when I'm about to close this path. So now, if I get my select tool, select on this shape and my circle, subtract, is now I've actually got like, kind of like a cheekbone here that I've drawn. And again, I can double click, move my points, I can add a point by double clicking and slowly mold a shape in there. And I could continue to subtract out of that face, but I can also just simply create things like a nose 
and maybe I remove the border and give it a color of say like a gray I can pop that nose on there it's pretty rough but because it's a vector I can zoom in double click and make my adjustments so you can slowly add and overlay multiple shapes cut out various shapes and essentially create unique sort of like shapes and objects with this tool. So we've been looking at some very simple shapes and sort of images so far, but what if we got something a bit more complex? What if we generate an image and convert it into a vector with the multiple colors? So let's start fresh by deleting what's on the page here. This time I'm gonna go over to Kittle AI, head back, but this time I'm gonna choose a clip art style. I'm gonna go show all, and I really like this mascot character. So I'm gonna choose mascot. And just for the sake of the video, I'll keep this essentially the same. But what I'm also gonna add in is plain green background, which is basically the idea of like having a green screen in my image. I'm gonna go down, generate my image. And now we've generated our image over here and it's placed onto the canvas. And if I zoom in, notice it becomes pixelated because it's actually a bitmap. So I'm gonna zoom out and it's gonna click on this image and go to vectorize. And it's got more than one color, as you can see here. I'm just gonna bring it up to 16, hit vectorize image, and now we have our vector image. Now what's really cool is if I double click on this green background, for one, I can check that it's green by looking at the colors over here, but I can hit delete, and I've removed that background, and I just have the graphic now. What's also cool is the simple fact that I can now click, double click on an area, check what color it is to see what I have selected, for one, I can move that, which isn't suitable for what we're doing, but notice how the white looks pretty good there. I'm gonna go on do, double click again. I'm gonna make this color more of a white color. And maybe I want the sunglasses to be more of a purple. I double click on the green. As you can see, I have the white. So you're gonna to have to take a little bit of care with the selection process. But now I've selected the green because I have the image open. I can just sort of go between. I'm gonna choose a really bright pink color. If I hover, you can see how it sort of shows an outline of what I'm about to select. So I've selected this, it's the dark green. This time I go for more of a darker purple. And you'll notice there's like a little artifact up here, which we basically don't want. So I can click on that and slowly delete those points. Now I've removed that artifact. So I can essentially make edits to this image I can move points around, I can recolor objects. One thing I find really cool is if I like this image but I don't want all the colors, is the reverse of what we were talking about is I can click on, so you can see I've selected the dark color here. Even just holding down my arrows, I can kind of just shift it away and then drag it away completely. And maybe I decide I really like this, but I don't want the remainder. So what I can do, and if I want to keep both, is I'm just going to hit copy, so Control C, undo, put it back in and then paste it in place and drag it down. So what I can now do, if I wanna get rid of this cause it's still classified as one graphic, is grab my rectangle tool, highlight one side, hold down shift and use the shape builder to subtract that away. And now I just have this one simple area here. I've got two separate graphics. I've got a color graphic and just a simple outline black and white graphic. And also you can upload SVG files if you want to edit vector files you've found from elsewhere. So I'll show you exactly how that works also. So I come over to the left here to the uploads tab. On the upload button, you notice it says PNG, JPEG, SVG, and WebP. SVG is a vector format. So if you have vector images that you can convert to SVG that you want to bring into Kittle, you can do that pretty easily. So if I click on this, I have this SVG file I downloaded from freepick.com. It's now been uploaded and it's a picture of a burger. So again, I can go in, remove the background. I can remove and I can continue to make all the same edits that we did before, such as moving objects around, changing color, or even make the cheese a bit of a weird green color to try and ward, ward people off eating this burger. Now the text that you create within Kittle is actually all vector objects. So I wanna show you a couple of tricks on how you can convert that into vector and actually customize certain parts of your text. This could be useful for logos or even just for posters and get something a bit more sort of unique. So I'm gonna remove our puppy dog logo, move our burger up, I'm gonna add in some text here. So I'll go to my text. I'm gonna add a headline. Maybe I say, 
burgers or something a little bit funny just for the demonstration purpose now this font is not necessarily the font I want to run with so I'm going to come over here to text where it has Roboto and choose a different font choose alpha slab one now you'll notice if I double click it just allows me to actually type in different text and I want to edit this like a vector now the Z is missing so I'm going to just increase this until it shows up now I can cut straight into this so if I grab this square tool here and let's say I want to cut out this little sort of serif part here I could just draw this box in here hold down shift to select and subtract and work from there it's now a vector image but if you're not quite sure you want to what you want to cut in with just yet it's going to come back out you can just create a box that sits over a, a complete area of the text hold down shift select both and click union and now you have a vector object now what's really cool about this is now I can make my edits. I can double click. Maybe I want to move this and notice how it kind of lines things up. It has like an automatic snap with this here. I can now click on this point, delete it and this one. Instead of trying to manipulate the points to get what I want here, I'm just going to grab my pen tool and I'm going to try and draw a little bit of a face. And again, I'm going to click this object, hold down shift, subtract. And I've kind of got a little face in there. It doesn't look perfect, but you get the idea. Once again, I can double click and clean it up. So smooth things out. And what if I want to add a little smile in here? Again, get my pen tool. Draw a little smile. Because I want to add to the black, I hold down shift for both union. And now I've got like the little cheesy looking smile here in the actual U. So probably not the greatest example but it does show you what's possible perhaps a better looking example is me sort of filling in this flame icon and using it to cut out a section of the a in my name to try and get a bit of a stylized looking a now if i want to fill it in a little bit pop another little object at the bottom like a little red triangle just to set it off and you can sort of see how you can customize these things to get some pretty cool and unique text effects. Now what's really cool about this is the fact that if you're designing this and working with clients, you can also use the real-time collaboration tool and that way you can work on a, on a project or even work with other designers and back and forth on some of these objects. So this makes it a really cool tool for working in teams, working with clients, and generally for running any kind of business where you're creating graphics online. So this is just another way that Kittle is basically becoming more of a graphic design centered AI platform. Not only can you generate images and edit them, but you can generate vectors, generate things like logos, emblems, and now even edit them. It's a really, really powerful tool and also means you can clean up some of the graphics you've created in the past if there's a few things about them you don't like. This is really a big step forward if you're a graphic designer looking for a simple online platform to create some of these vector graphics with. So I highly recommend you check out Kittle using the link in the description below. There is a discount for viewers of this channel. So jump on that while it's still there. Otherwise, that is the video for today, guys. And if you liked it, please consider giving the video a like. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.